Hello everyone, this is Malki Asad, a plastic surgeon resident in the US, and in this video I will share with you tips that will help you pass the step 3 if you are in a hurry. I will also share with you a detailed study plan and schedule that can help you pass the step 3 in just 3 weeks. The first tip I have for you is picking the right resources. Some students take the step 3 before they start their residency, especially IMGs, while most US students take the step 3 during the residency. And in both scenarios, you have very limited time to study for this exam, unlike step 1 and step 2CK. And that's why it's key to identify the right resources so you're not wasting your time between so many question banks and so many books. A resource that worked for me and so many others is the UALT question bank, especially for the MCQ part of the exam. But the key to scoring high, especially if you're someone who's looking to get a high score to improve a low step to CK score is to study it well because there are 2300 questions in that question bank and there is explanation for each question, uh, explanation for the wrong choices. So that's why it's key if you want to score high, not just pass, to study these questions very well. Two additional resources that I recommend for you that can supplement your studying with you all is the Match Guy Step 3 CCS course and the Match Guy Biostatistics course. The step 3 CCS course will probably take you like 5 hours, something like that, so you can get an idea of how to solve the questions on the CCS platform. So if you start with that resource before you study the CCS cases, it will save you so much time trying to figure out the platform, how to put the orders, what is the appropriate order. And the same applies to the biostatistics course, it takes around half a day to do, but it will go over all the high yield topics for the biostatistics because you will see that biostatistics is very heavily tested on the step 3 exam. And that's why having a comprehensive high yield course about the biostatistics is going to improve your score significantly when it comes to these questions. So don't overwhelm yourself with so many resources, focus on the UOL questions, especially for the MCQ part, get the CCS course so you can understand this platform, especially if you're new to it because this is something that present in step 1 and step 2 and the biostatistics course will give you a quick overview of high yield commonly asked questions so you can ace that part of the exam. The second tip I have for you is identify your goal. If you're a resident in the US in a residency program, you're likely wanting to just pass the step 3 exam so you can qualify for renewing the license. If you're an IMG who match into residency and want to get the step 3 done so they can qualify for the H1B visa, your goal is likely just to pass. But if you're someone who scored low on the step 2 CK and you're taking the step 3 as a way to show that you can score high, your strategy is totally different. And some might say, I want to score high because it's important for fellowship. To my understanding, most fellowships in the US don't care too much about your step 3 score. But what I recommend is ask people in your fellowship of interest, ask them, does the step 3 score matter at all? And if it matters, you have to probably get some decent score, unlike just wanting to pass the exam. The third tip, it's kind of obvious, and it is do not fail. You'd be surprised how many people are forced to leave their residency because they did not pass the step 3 exam. Because in many states, it's a requirement to get to the next year of your residency. So if you don't pass it, you won't be able to advance in your residency training. I also heard many, many instances of IMGs who underestimated step 3. They wanted to take it early on so they can improve their chances of matching by scoring high and they ended up failing the exam and now it's hurting them. So be realistic in where you are right now and how much time you need and how much preparation to get to your goal, either pass the exam or score a certain score. And one thing that can help you know where you stand and whether you're going to be failing or not is self-assessment exams. So take the MBME self-assessments, take few UOL self-assessments, there is a sample from the MBME, a free sample that you can check out and we actually have full list of answers and explanations of the free sample from the MBME that I'll leave the link for that in the description below. The downside of the self-assessments for step 3 unlike step 1 and step 2 is that you won't get the CCS cases scored. So you're only getting yourself self-assessed for the MCQ section of the exam. But if you're passing on the MCQ, you take the CCS course, you study the CCS cases, you're likely to pass. But of course, no guarantees. The fourth tip is identify how many hours a day and how many days a week are you able to study. The situation for step 3 is very different from step 1 and step 2, where people have full dedicated weeks of studying. If you're in residency, your time is extremely limited and you don't have these luxury of hours that you had for step 1 and step 2. So many residents end up taking a vacation week to study for step 3. If you're an IMG and taking the step 3 exam before you start your residency, you might have more luxury in time. But if you're taking the exam to get the H1B visa sponsorship, 
make sure to watch the video that I'll leave in the description below in which we discuss with the immigration lawyer the timeline that you need to consider and keep in mind when doing the step three if you're interested in H-1B visa. So identify exactly how many hours you have a day, how many days a week because sometimes you have more freedom on the weekend. Identify if you can use vacation weeks or not because that will affect how you're building your study plan and schedule and what things you need to skip in your preparation versus things you need to focus on. The fifth tip is your study techniques and strategy. This is key, especially for people who have very limited time. You wanna make sure that during these hours you're studying, you're taking the most out of the knowledge in these question banks and these courses. And multiple studies have identified that just reading, passive learning does not help as much as active learning. And to give you a practical example of that, if you're studying from a question bank and you solve the question, you come to read the explanation, now you know the topic that you'll be reading, what the explanation is about most of the time because you've studied step one, you've studied step two. So try to think of what are the presentations of this disease, diagnosis, the treatment, and the pathophysiology. These are the four tenets of every disease. And by you trying to remember what these informations were, that can help solidify the information when you read it. And again, even if you fail to remember, just the act of your brain searching will solidify this memory into more long-term memory. Because studies have shown that if you just read without any uh, effort to try to remember, that creates something called the illusion of learning, where you think you're learning, but in reality, you're just reading and this information doesn't really stick. Another important tenant of good study techniques is space repetition. A practical example of that, you finished a full block of your world, instead of you reviewing this block today, you leave it until the end. You give it some space and you repeat it afterwards. Take notes from your studying in the most efficient way possible because you won't have time to go through the whole question bank one more time. So take notes of the information you want to review for the last three, four days of your exam, but make sure you're doing it very efficiently and you're not wasting so much time writing this information on a notebook. And I have a detailed video on how to take notes for your USMLE exams. And I'll leave the link for that in the description below. And avoid distractions. Phones and notifications and the internet is now your enemy for you to pass your exam and score high. It is what most of the time stands between you and your focus on your study materials and your question bank and everything. So make sure when you're studying, you silence your phone, you put it away, start a stopwatch for every time you're using your phone so you can know exactly how much time you're spending on your phone during your studying time and that can help you minimize that. And finally, focus on what is high yield. Don't waste so much time focusing on things that are very unlikely to be tested. And if you're having any difficulty identifying what is high yield, we have tutors who can help you with that. They will sit with you one topic at a time, go over the important concepts, tell you what is important, what is something worth focusing on versus not, which will save you so much time of your studying, especially with the limited time you have. And now it's time to go over a study schedule that will show you how you can pass the step three in three weeks. So when it comes to building a study plan and schedule, it's key to identify what are you studying. And then you divide the days that you have per the resources and see if that's achievable. So the first thing I put on here is you world around 2,300 questions. Let's say you're studying around 150 questions per day, which is probably on the high end, but remember you're doing step three after you already finished step one and step two. A lot of the questions you'll see on step three are very similar to the step two questions. And also, if you're in residency, especially in internal medicine or family medicine or pediatrics, these questions are very similar to the everyday life scenarios you encounter. So you should be able to move faster with the step three question explanations compared to step one or step two. But if you're not moving as fast and you have time, you can divide these questions across a longer time period. While on the other hand, if you're limited on time, you have to cut out some questions. And I recommend you cut out the questions that you feel comfortable with, especially sections that you studied very well on your step two, or you answered correctly by doing some samples during the step three question bank on UOR. So with this rate, we'll be done with UOR in around 15 days. The CCS course and the biostatistics course I told you about will take around a day. So we'll add that here. We wanna leave some time for self-assessments. If you do four of them, each one will take around half a day. So the four of them will take around two days. And then we will need some time for reviewing. So if you leave around three days for reviewing any notes you took, any information you need to review, that will get us a total of 21 days. So with this schedule, you'd be able to pass the step three in three weeks. And as I said, you can adjust this schedule based on your situation. If you need more time to review your old questions, you can extend that. 
if you need less time, you can decrease that. So now after I shared with you the tips to acing the step three exam if you're in a hurry and the schedule to prepare for the step three exam in three weeks, if you still need any help from our tutors, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our tutoring is 100% satisfaction guarantee, which means if you're not happy, we'll give you your money back even if the session is done because our priority is your success and your satisfaction. Also, the courses I told you about all are 100% satisfaction guarantee. That's how much we trust the value that we provide to you through these courses. So if you try them and you don't like them, no problem, we'll give you your money back. And we have phenomenal reviews of both our tutoring and our courses. So if you have any questions about these, don't hesitate to reach out to us at info at If you find any value in this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell sign so you get notified whenever I post future videos on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in and good luck on your exam.